gentleman, President Barack Obama. Let's hear from Simon in Glasgow on Trump. Go ahead, Simon. Hi, George. How are you doing? I'm good, sir. That's good. I've got a question for you. In 2012 electoral nominations, several people came on your show, both in the UK and the United States, to show support for Ron Paul, a man whose policies, let's face it, didn't match your preferences, which were probably more socialist. Um, Ron Paul wanted as less government control as possible uh, and believed in something you said was tooth and nail cap capitalism, yeah. something you clearly didn't agree with. Um, however, on a positive side, he did want to make the United States a far more isolationist country by stopping foreign intervention, pulling troops out of Iraq and Afghanistan, ending the Federal Reserve System, which acts as a banking monopoly in the United States, uh, introducing a more stable currency. I mean, believe me, I don't, I don't agree with the gold standard either, as you don't, uh, as, uh, same as you. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a much fairer stance in the Israel-Palestine conflict. Now, at the time, you mentioned that his policies would not be good for the people of the United States, though you did say that if you were voting selfishly, you would back Ron Paul. Yeah. Now, let, just let's go to the economic policies of Trump. Uh, his economic policies are very questionable, needless to say, um, and in my opinion, very protectionist and openly racist. While it's been a um, well-known fact that he probably avoids paying his taxes, I mean, many people don't like the fact that he's using taxpayers' money to build walls um, on the border of Mexico. Um, Trump, in my opinion, is still a crony capitalist, and certainly executive orders he signed lean towards favoring the bank, uh, uh, banks and corpor uh, big corporations. Ron Paul was against crony capitalism and corporatism, or certainly from what he said he was. Now, in the recent election, I'm not going to say you backed Trump, uh, you didn't back Trump, but you said Trump was probably the best of a bad bunch. As you know, his foreign policy has been very controversial and divisive. On one hand, it appears that he wants to be less controversial with confrontational with Russia, which is great, because this reduces the likelihood of two nuclear powers uh, starting World War III. And yet, on the other hand, his policies on immigration uh, have been racist and xenophobic. Now, my question to you was, on hindsight, would you say that Ron Paul would have, have, would have been a better choice for voters in 2012. Bearing in mind, Ron Paul probably wouldn't have been voted in by the mainstream media, and they would, he wouldn't have been backed by the mainstream media at the time, uh, than Donald Trump was in 2000, uh, 2016. Bearing in mind that the Democratic opposition at the time, Obama in 2012 and Hillary in 2016, pretty much had the same neoconservative uh, policies, also ignoring all the politics that were used by the Republican Party to keep Ron Paul from winning the nomination, and the reason that many in the mainstream media uh, uh, give, uh, give that the people were tired of establishment figures always winning, which could still be said in 2012 as it was in 2016. Well, uh, first of all, well remembered. Uh, 2012 is a long time ago, and you've remembered my uh, arguments at that time with pristine accuracy. Uh, and I don't resile from them. Uh, I said at the time uh, that uh, Ron Paul would be better for the world, but he would be worse for the people of the United States. And uh, I believe that that's true, because he is a libertarian capitalist who wants to destroy government, destroy the state, and uh, the red and tooth and claw capitalism that he believes in is not good for the people of the United States. On the other hand, Trump intends to use public money to make jobs and industry for the people of the United States. He doesn't want to shrink the state. He's going to make the state's expenditure vastly greater. He's going to pave the United States. He says, in everything I say about Trump, there's a big, giant, 10-foot F I F. If, as he says, he intends to pave the United States with publicly funded infrastructure, well, that's a good thing for the United States, and it's a good thing for the working people in the United States. And his policy towards the globalized corporations, uh, which have shifted their plant, machinery, and jobs out of the United States in pursuit of greater levels of profit, return on their investment, is disastrous for the working people in the so-called Rust Belt states who voted for Trump precisely because he was threatening to put the chains and shackles on the corporations to stop them moving jobs out of America and to stop them closing down industry. There's much more I could say, but we've run out of time because your question was just that little bit long.
Come back again, Simon. I enjoyed talking to you. This is